Hey guys, what's up? It's been a while since I've done a video really at all. 2018 Boston Calling Music Festival. This is the first time I've ever been to Boston Calling and this was really the first music festival for me. I've been to Warped Tour like three, four times and I Warped Tour I guess is a music festival but it's not really a traditional music festival. So I didn't really know what to expect from Boston Calling before going to it. I did like a lot of research just on like what other people said about the music festival, what the environment was going to be like, the particular like venue it was going to be at, traffic, like finding parking and stuff, uh, if it was better to just drive up or uh, take like the train or something, which a lot, a lot of back and forth went through that, but me and my friend ended up driving up there. And from like where I live, it only takes like an hour and 30 minutes or so, and for a Friday, like on Memorial Day weekend, like it really wasn't that bad getting there. I reserved like a parking spot um, through this, it's like an app and company called ParkWiz where you can basically just reserve like a spot in a garage. When you were in waiting in line, the line moved pretty quick for as many people as they were there. Um, we went to the Friday date, which was the, like I said, the first day. There was three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I would have loved to have gone to all three days because there was a band or an artist that I would have loved to see on the rest of the days, but the Friday one was just the one that I, like, I could only, we could only have, like, do one day just for how it was working out. I went with my friend Hannah, who I've talked about, I think, in previous concert talks, but the line moved pretty quickly. It didn't really take long at all to get in there, so when we were waiting in line, they had metal detectors that you had to walk through, and if you had a bag, they had to search it, and, like, you really couldn't walk around the venue with a bag bigger than, like, 12 by 12, I think, or something, so they were, like, very cautious about that. They didn't want you to have cigarettes or any like tobacco lighters inside the venue but people still did anyway so whatever so when you walk in like it was at the uh harvard athletic complex which is like a part of the school so it was on like a school ground like a university grounds and it's like basically like these giant uh fields i don't know if they're like soccer fields football fields i guess they can use it for a little bit of everything right but um it was very like spread out they had three stages and it was kind of, I liked how simple it was. It was very simple, which made it kind of easier to follow and figure out where you were going. They had the um, blue stage, which was all the way on like a, a, the opposite side of where the other two stages were. They had a red and a green stage that were side by side from each other. And then they also had an arena where like comedians or like different types of celebrities or people came to do whatever they had to do. I thought that was a little bit misleading, but I'll kind of go more into that later. Um, Boston Calling also has an app. So if you downloaded the app, it had a um, interactive map which is what we used for the most part to get from point A to point B. It was very easy to use. You could like, if you wanted to look through something through a category like food, bathrooms, it would like be like, okay, like here's where you are and this is like where it is. Or like if you were looking for a certain stage or something, like I just thought the map was very easy to follow. It had like the line at like the set times and the stages that the different artists and bands were playing at. And it was cool too because the ones that you wanted to see the most or just wanted to see in general, like you could put them on your favorites. And like it would show you like from start to finish, like okay you're seeing these bands all in like the order or whatever of the day. And um, you would get like a notification on your phone that would be like, hey, so-and-so is playing in 15 minutes. And I thought that was really cool that it did that for you just because it was like you could, you know, get there earlier. If you're thinking about going to Boston Calling, I highly recommend that you get the app. There was five, I want to say like five bands we really wanted to see there as well. Um, the first band that we saw, which played around like three o'clock, maybe like right before three o'clock, like two something, uh, was Big Feath. And I didn't really know much about this band. That's my dog in the background. If you hear him, I'm sorry. He is barking. But I found out about them through Haley Williams. She tends to like, will post like a song by a certain band or artist, like on her Instagram account or her Twitter. 
And she posted like a couple of Big Thief songs like when their album Capacity came out. Like um, like indie folk rock. The singer is a uh, got a very strong voice um her voice almost reminds me of stevie nicks with that kind of thinner but softer in a sense twangy ringy ringy voice i don't know that they have a very similar style i'm probably not even explaining this great but like they have a similar style in the vocal department um but i wouldn't necessarily say that uh this singer has the same range as Stevie Nicks, but like just that style of voice. And they were really good. They played, I want to say they played like six or seven songs and we got pretty close to them because they were very lax. The uh, lead singer too was doing a lot of cool guitar effects with her guitar. She actually did like, and I didn't expect her to really do any solos, but she kind of did like little guitar solo, guitar effect things with like the pedals and kind of tune changes and stuff. And then I really wanted to see Citizen. They were also playing kind of right around the time that Big Thief set was ending. So I really wanted to see them, but my friend was like tired from like standing cause like she's not used to like standing so much. Um, so like we kind of like got drinks and we got alcohol and stuff and there was like there was food vendors and stuff like all around this place. It wasn't like in one particular spot where they had everything which I really liked that they did that like by the blue stage since it was so far the other way they still had like the same food vendors or like food stands where you could get food and drinks and stuff and then like if you were over by the other two stages like they had a ton of like food vendor stuff too and you could you could get alcohol too and then they had like this giant like beer tent thing where you could get like these specific types of um like beers or wines she really wanted to see natalie portman was playing at the arena so she really wanted to see them and i'm like okay we'll go see natalie portman instead i really wanted to see citizen i think it would have been cool to see them in a festival setting i saw them a couple of years ago opened for Circus Survive on one of their tours and they did incredible but I really wanted to hear them play these new songs from As You Please but I could hear like them playing from where we were like where the arena was when we were waiting in line so I guess that was good enough but I missed their set I'm kind of sad about it and basically you could kind of sit anywhere you wanted but like we sat there and then um Natalie Portman comes out and I thought it was like gonna be like a comedy sketch thing because that's what when I was looking up like what the arena was about like they were like oh it's gonna be like comedy people and comedy acts so I was like okay and then she's like introducing saying that her friends and her made this uh, silent film basically but they had like um, different musicians like there was a cello player a guitarist and like a pianist like playing the music along with a silent film and it was in black and white and it was in um the it was filmed in Ant Amsterdam in like 2004 or something so she introduced the video and then she like left and you didn't see her like the rest of the time there and the silent film was interesting it was kind of like trippy and weird it didn't really make much sense either so we kind of left during like the last few minutes of the short films like Natalie Portman like never came back out I just thought it was really weird that like they were like oh Natalie Portman this is like all about her and then like you really didn't see her like she was literally on stage for like two seconds and then you just watched this film so I kind of felt like we wasted like an hour of time but whatever at least I got to say that I kind of saw Natalie Portman in person but Newberry Comics had like a giant tent there which I got to explore. Um, they had boxes of like vinyl from the artists that were playing the festival and CDs and then like other merchandise you could get there too. They had like socks, hats, fanny packs, like kind of weird shit there too. So if you purchase something there you got a free bag. They give you a free bag as well as a light up thing which I really didn't end up using um but people were like woo and that was my impression of being at a festival and getting excited. I bought at the Newberry Comics tent just because I didn't get to see Citizen play their um 
As You Please album, which is amazing. This came out like last year and was one of my favorite albums of 2017 really good and I just wanted to get a physical copy of this in some way. Portugal the Man was playing. My friend really wanted to see Portugal the Man because she really liked that one song that's like on the radio, Feel It Still. And I'm familiar with Portugal the Man. I remember listening to them like back in the day when I was starting to get into like in like alternative music and like that kind of style of music. So I remember like listening to them back in like 2008 and 9. So we saw for the most part most of Portugal the Man set. They opened up doing playing a couple of covers. They played a Metallica cover which was really cool. I think it caught a lot of people off guard too. Then they also played I did a cover of Another Brick in the Wall by Pink Floyd, which got a lot of people really intrigued and I think more engaged in their set. And continu continuously like behind them they had like the weirdest visuals ever, but I think it fit the mood that they were trying to like fit the mood and the vibe that they were trying to give off for the set. So I actually surprisingly for the most part enjoyed Portugal and the Man's set. They played a couple songs that I was familiar with. We left a little bit early from their set so we get a good spot for Paramore. I, overall I did like Portugal Man set. They had a couple of guys come out with like two there was a guy like with a tuba, a guy with a saxophone, a trumpet player, and they had like this cool like intro to one of their songs with like all these horns playing and it, it just was like really cool and I really liked the um a lot of the instrumental aspects of their uh set and that's like one one of my favorite live bands is Paramore. I've seen them like two other times live before that and they just put on such a killer show every time. Got a pretty good spot like in the middle-ish left side of Paramore. I was really excited to see them in a festival setting because I know they would I expected them to play more upbeat songs, which they did, and they played more of kind of the bigger, the bigger hits from like their catalog, and they played a lot of stuff off of After Laughter too, which is fine, like I understand they want to like promote the cycle of that album, and there's a lot of upbeat and fun songs on that album to play, so it made the most sense to me. They opened up with like Hard Times, which was awesome. They play like they played a lot of stuff, like I said, off After Laughter. Pretty much everything off of After Laughter. Hard Times, Rose Colored Boy, Told You So, Forgiveness, which was really cool. I didn't expect them to play that. Idol Worship, which I was really happy to see that live. They also played No Friend, which was really cool. Uh, Fake Happy, and then they played like you know more of the bigger hits from the self-titled. Uh, still Into You, Ain't It Fun, they played Ignorance, That's What You Get, like a lot of, you know, a lot of the bigger songs, but I would say like pretty much a good majority of the set list was After Laughter, really. The Paramore's visuals were very cool, very like 80s and funky. It, it kind of fit the whole mood of like the After Laughter vibe that they have for that album, so the visuals that that really went perfectly. Um, they also played I Caught Myself, which I did not expect them to play that, um, like, just in a festival, but I saw them play that before and they did great, so seeing them play it again was awesome, and just, I had such a connection with them playing that song because when they were playing it, they had, like, a background of, like, dark clouds and stuff, I think, to fit the mood because it was from Twilight, obviously. And then, like, when I looked up the sky, like, the sky matched the visuals on the, um, that they, they were playing for that song. So it just, it felt so right. Everything felt so right about that with, like, the sky, with the visuals, with, like, the mood of the song. I don't know. I really, like, connected with that a lot. Amazing job, as usual. Haley Williams gives it her all. And the rest of the band, Taylor, did great on guitar. Zach killed it on drums. I always love seeing him play when Haley's just got always got her dance moves for any song no matter what that they were playing and just has a lot of energy and sounds incredible live. So Paramore is definitely one of my favorites. Paramore to um, The Killers. The Killers played last. They played right after Paramore pretty much at the uh, green stage so we went all the way back there and we saw Killer set also from start to finish. And this was the band that I was the most excited to see. 
I've been listening to The Killers since like I, I was a freshman in high school and I remember buying Hot Fuss and Sam's Town and those were just such monumental records for me get, like getting into the, like that genre of music. And my friend Hannah, that's her favorite band is The Killers. So like for her, it was just so important for her to like see them. I wanted to get a beer and she wanted to like get really close to the stage. So like we like couldn't find each other for like half of their set, like because so many people were there for the killers. So like by the time I got my beer, I couldn't find her in the crowd. Um, and I had to like, it was kind of hard to enjoy like the first couple songs cause I'm trying to figure out where this, this bitch is. And I couldn't find her until like the later half of the set. But the killers, man, the killers killed it 100%. They were the best band of the day in my opinion. My favorite set for sure. They all are just incredibly talented musicians and I know it's not all the original members that were playing on stage. It was really just Brandon and then the drummer Ronnie. But just like the musicianship with that, with them feeling like a real ba band and everything and the whole just, the whole set, the, I mean they really put on a show. They really put on an entertaining performance and not one song really had like a screw up in it. It just like, it all worked. And their set list was really versatile and kind of all over the place, but it worked in so many ways. They really played a lot of great songs. They played like a little bit off day and age with like Spaceman, Human, Dustland Fairy Tale, singles off of like their new album, Wonderful Wonderful, like Run For Cover. The Man, which was really awesome to see that song. The Calling, which was probably like my favorite of the new stuff that they played. And then like, of course they played like the older stuff from Hot Fuss, uh, Smile Like You Mean It, All These Things I've Done, Somebody Told Me. Mr. Brightside, they opened up with that like right at the get go. Um, it, like a little bit off Sam's Town too, Read My Mind, which is an incredible song for reasons unknown and also uh, When We Were Young, which is what they closed with, which I thought was like a perfect way to like close their set. Amazing. And then they also did like a tribute to Tom Petty by covering um, American Girl. And then it kind of transitioned to like the chorus of Free Falling. So, I mean, that was amazing too to see. Brandon Flowers just was all over the place. His voice sounded incredible, like absolutely flawless, like really was like just amazing to hear like such a strong, powerful voice like that in a live setting. Um, and every, like I said, everybody in the band performed very well, the guitarist, the bassist, Roddy the drummer, amazing, like the, these guys just did such a great job. Um, I loved the whole kind of vibe. They had like little backup dancer people that I think like added something really cool to certain songs where it was necessary. I'm so happy I got to see The Killers. Like right after just seeing them play, I felt the urge like, I need to see this band again. And it kind of sucks because they really don't tour much and they're pretty much just doing festivals now, but I'm absolutely blessed and grateful that to say that I got to see The Killers. This is what the single day one looked like for Friday. It's, um, it just said like Friday GA and like the little plastic piece was like the part where you like when you scan, like go in and like scan it in. That was the part where you like scan it in. I was like, okay, I'll let you go in. And like you always had it on you and you really couldn't take this thing off unless you cut it. Like as you can see, in order for me to take this off, I had to cut it. So like outside of the venue, like before and after, and they probably did this for all three days, like there was guys selling like their own Boston Calling shirts, which I personally liked a lot better than the venues. And this is what at least the one for this year looked like that these guys made. And it's, I mean, it's not the most like, you know, beautifully made shirt or anything like that, but it says Boston Calling um, Music Festival and it has like the little dog thing on it. It has like the dates and it says 2018 Harvard Athletic Complex. And then on the back, what I really liked on the back was it had all of the artists that were playing. So you see Eminem, The Killers, like it had all the bigger acts. And then like below that, you can see like the 
comedians that came, as well as um, the other bands that came. Um, so I just, I really enjoyed like this design better and then this also has the dates too. Overall, if you're thinking about going, I recommend going. I thought for the most part, the vibes were really great at, uh, at this festival. Hit the like button below guys, if you enjoyed this video. Also subscribe to me if you like to see more videos. I really want to try and put more out there, um, in the future. Um, comment down below and tell me if you went to Boston Calling this year. If so, what day and who did you see? If you have not been, let me know if you were interested in going. As always, guys, stay brutal. Stay tuned. For